everyone so as most of you know the second go battle night of the season just concluded this past weekend and there's been some recent twitter chatter about some of the things that happen during go battle night and in preparation for go battle night the topic generally revolves around legends and people of very high rank in gbl tanking on purpose so that way they can match make opponents below their skill level so that they can have more wins and reap more benefits during go battle night so I'm just creating a video here to share some of my ideas on this topic and a potential solution. So before I talk about my proposed solution, let me talk about the various different things related to this in case you don't know already. So first off, there's matchmaking, which is when you queue up into GBL, you match up with someone roughly around your skill level and Niantic does this by matching with someone of similar ELO, right? So that's the points you have after you hit rank 20. Usually speaking, the points of the opponents you match with are similar in rank to you, but sometimes it may not be depending on how long you have to sit and wait for. The purpose of this matchmaking is to ensure that everyone you battle is roughly around your skill level and as you beat more opponents, you gain more points. If you start losing against those opponents, your ELO drops and you end up facing opponents that are a little bit easier than the ones you just face. It's honestly a great way to ensure that the competition you face in these matches are roughly around your skill level no matter where you're at. However, if the matchmaking system cannot find opponents in your ELO range, they'll start expanding the search. So they'll start queuing you with opponents that have much higher ELO or much lower ELO. So the longer you sit in queue, the broader this matchmaking system goes in terms of finding new opponents for you. Now, most players probably won't experience queue times because there's a lot of players around your range, but at the upper tier, there's much less opponents around your ELO range. So therefore, you're going to be sitting in queue for much longer. As an example, my ELO is at 3200s at the moment, which is pretty high compared to the rest of the player base. I don't say that to brag or anything. I just want to show you an example of what queue times look like for me at the moment. So I'm going to start this video of me queuing up on the right side of the screen, and it's going to be me waiting there for an opponent. And you'll see kind of how long it takes for me to find an opponent. Now, queue times only impact a small percentage of players. However, it does explain why some players want to purposely drop their ELO so that they find more matches. And this leads to the concept of tanking. So what is tanking? Tanking is purposely losing matches. Either you're quitting right when you find an opponent or bringing, bringing 10 CP Pokemon just so you lose faster. And the whole purpose of that is to ensure that you lose a match and then you drop your ELO. And this is better for people that may be streaming. So they have audiences that want to watch them battle and they're sitting there waiting for a battle to happen the whole time. That's not really great content. People are just going to leave their stream, right? Another reason maybe people don't have time to sit around and wait in queue all day long to find a battle. Another big reason, and this is what sparked this whole debate, is rewards. So specifically, if you drop a lot in your ranking, you'll probably end up facing a lot of opponents that are much lower in skill level because they're at a way lower ELO rating than what you should be at. This means you can string together a bunch of wins in the process and reap a lot of the rewards from GBL. And because this season we have a lot of go battle nights that give you extra stardust for winning battles and even losing battles too, if you tank enough ELO before those go battle nights, you're going to end up reaping a lot of rewards for go battle night because you tanked and then climbed all the way back up. Alternatively, if you stayed at the high ELO range you're at, you may end up facing less opponents because you're sitting queue times for a while. And also the opponents you may face are much closer to you in skill level, which means that you're not winning as much. If you're not winning as much during go battle night, you're gonna gain a little bit less stardust as well. Now, what are the consequences of tanking? So you'll have people that are legends or very high rank experts or et cetera, dropping in their ELO on purpose and they end up facing players much lower in rank. So you might have a person that's ready to hit legend face someone that's only ace. And because of that, the matchups can potentially be quite skewed and the ace players may be outmatched based off a of skill level and experience in the game. Now this could lead to some negative experiences for players who are in the ace range because people in the ace, they're trying to climb, right? They wanna hit legend themselves. They wanna win. If it's go battle night, they wanna win so they get more rewards too. Another consequence for tanking in general and also for these types of events is that when you're tanking, you're giving up ELO in the process as a person that's tanking. So you're purposely giving them a free win so they, so people that face the person that's tanking will get a free win on their end and get more rewards and more ELO in that process. I purposely have never purposely tanked. I might have lost just because I did misplays or used a bad team, but I never tried to lose. But I have faced players that have tanked and given me free ELO and free wins in the process. So yeah, that benefits me in the process of them dropping. Now, many players that tank may often use this as an explanation for why they think that it's still balanced because they are giving wins on the process of tanking. Personally speaking, I think there is logic behind that argument. I do think though that with events like Go Battle Night, tanking a lot on purpose and then trying to win out a lot of easier matchups for them 
for extra rewards doesn't actually make the give and take kind of even because their net gains for the amount they win during Go Battle Night is much higher than their net losses for tanking prior to Go Battle Night. Because rewards are higher on Go Battle Night, you have much more to gain by stringing together a bunch of wins during that event than losing a bunch of ELO and then gaining it on some regular day. That's a whole different debate on whether that's right or wrong or anything like that. Personally, I have a lot of friends that do tank for Go Battle Night and then they reap a lot of rewards and I have friends that don't. But personally speaking, I'm not really interested in passing any moral judgment on those that do decide to tank for things like Go Battle Night. So here's the solution I propose for the matchmaking system that could potentially change all of this. So I propose a matchmaking system based off of rank with fixed ELO gains and losses. For example, instead of pairing people up based off of their ELO, you would have people paired based off of their rank. So Ace would match up with Ace, Expert would match up with Expert, Legend would match up with Legend, etc. For example, it doesn't matter if the Expert is at 2750 ELO or 2999, they're just as likely to match with each other as much as the 2750 Expert is likely to match with the 2751 Expert. So for each win, they may gain eight points and then for each loss, they may lose four points. Obviously you have to lose a little bit less than you would gain. So that way people have a chance to even climb and move up the ladder. Otherwise everyone would probably be stuck around the 2000 mark. These points obviously are just suggestions and they can be adjusted depending on whatever the formula makes most sense. Now, if there's not a lot of people in a certain rank, so this is specifically important earlier on in the season, let's say when we have the first person that hits legend. So what does that person do? I think if there's so few people in a certain rank to the point where they can't even find anyone else in that rank when queued up, they should queue up with someone a rank below them. So in that situation, if you're one of the first legend or you're the very first legend in the world, you can match up with someone that's an expert. But to adjust for these skill differences, you would gain half the amount of points for a win and lose double the amount of points for a loss. So in this specific situation, the legend would only gain four points instead of eight points against the expert, but would lose eight points instead of losing four points versus the expert. On the flip side, the expert would gain double the points for a win and lose half the points for a loss. So they would potentially gain 16 points for a win and only lose two points for a loss. This is to ensure that because they're matching up with a person of a different rank, the skill differences are translated for the points, gains, and lost. Now, some people might think this is kind of a weird concept, but honestly, at the current point in time, this is how the system works anyway, just without fixed values. If you're the first person to hit 3000 ELO, the next person that you match up with is probably gonna be way lower than you. So you might match up with someone in the 2800s because there's not a lot of people close to 3000 mark if you're the first one. If that person in the 3000 mark wins, they don't get a lot of ELO for their win. And if they lose, they tend to lose a lot of ELO because they match up with a player much lower than them. For those that have been pretty close to the top of the leaderboards, they'll know that sometimes even going three and two, three wins and two losses, you can still lose ELO in the process because of the ELO of the players you match up against were lower than you. Pretty much the current matchmaking system in terms of ELO's gains and loss when matching up with people higher ranked than you is already similar to this. I'm just adding a fixed formula to the system, but also ensuring that people still match up right away into either the same rank or rank below them if there's not a lot of people in that same rank. Now, some people brought up some interesting feedback on my Twitter post about this of how someone in the 3,500 plus ELO range can be very different skill level than someone at the 3,000 ELO range, even though they're both legends. This is definitely a valid point and honestly something that will probably become a bigger and bigger concern as the season goes on because the levels between the lowest ranked legend and the highest ranked legend start differentiating much more. But to work around the system, an idea I have is to create a star rating for those that are in the legend rank. So once you hit that 3K mark, you'll be a one star legend. If we follow the formula for each of the ranks, you'll see that there's 250 point difference between each of the ranks from ace to veteran, veteran to expert, expert to legend. So what you can do is start adding different star ratings to legends that hit a certain threshold. So once you hit 3250, you'll be a two star legend. Once you hit 3500, you'll be a three star legend. Once you hit 3750, you'll be a four star legend, etc. Hopefully Niantic doesn't have to add too many stars to the ratings because they reset the ladder at the end of every season. But from this, even within legends, they would only match up with similar legends of their star rating. Of course, if there isn't enough people in that star rating, let's say there's only a few three star legends then they'll start matching three star legends with two star legends and taking account of the different ELOs gains and loss for matching two different people of different ranks. This will ensure competition is relevant even at the highest level for legends. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons for this potential solution. If you're only matching people of the same rank as you, it doesn't really do anything to tank. You could tank and your ELO will go down, 
let's say as a legend, but you're still gonna end up facing other legends whenever you queue up. So there's really no purpose in tanking your ELO. Unless you wanna just give free wins to people, you have nothing personal to benefit from that situation. Because of this, players should be consistently battling people of roughly the same skill level as them throughout the entire season. You're never gonna see a person that's in the ace ranking match up with a legend ever again. You might have someone that's a legend match up with the expert, but that's only a one rank difference and the expert has advantage because they gain a few more points if they win. And they don't lose that much if they lose. Q times as a whole should be greatly reduced. In fact, it might even be non-existent unless there's no one queuing up to battle at all. Um, obviously there's some cons as well and some of the feedback in my Twitter feed definitely helps provide some of these ideas. So let's say a player goes on a really hot streak and wins you know, 10 battles in a row, 20 battles in a row and makes it up to the next rank. And then they end up really struggling in the future because they're now at a new rank and they're constantly battling players that are much better than them. And had they not had that streak, then they might not be in that rank. Personally speaking, I don't think this is a huge issue because honestly, I think anyone that's capable of even reaching a rank probably deserves to be in that rank. Also, if they are struggling a bit, everyone consistently for the most part are climbing throughout the season, which is why you see the ELOs go higher and higher. So people of the tier below them will eventually make it into that same rank and then they'll be battling people of similar skill level eventually. Another con is you may be facing the same opponents constantly, and I think this is actually much more of an issue for the very highest tier. Let's say if there's only a few four-star legends in the world, you may be constantly battling between the same people all the time, or constantly facing people that are a tier below you. Granted, over time, more people should be joining that tier, so it's not the biggest issue, but you may see a lot of repetition of players' names when you face them. This will probably only impact the people at the highest ELO ratings, but in the current state of the matchmaking system, this pretty much happens anyway because you're matching with people of similar ELO, so I don't think this con is particularly something that doesn't already exist in some way or form already. People that want to tank and then climb for rewards, especially on things like Go Battle Night where dust bonuses are even greater, we'll not be able to do that anymore. And some people might not think this is a big issue, but it is a potential concern for those that do enjoy those boosted rewards when they tank and then climb back up. And another con is that Niantic has to rework their system. They're going to change their matchmaking system. If they want to implement the different sub tiers within Legends with the different star ratings, then they have to add that as well. And this is going to take time and resources out of their schedules to even implement something like this. I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the video too. And then here are some potential outcomes for the future if a system like this was implemented. First off, for some people that already hit legend, they might be content with just hitting legend and tanking or just chilling out. But having different star tiers for legends may add something for those people to grind towards besides just the leaderboards. And down the road, if Niantic ever wants to host invitational tournaments for invites for PP, they could go off of the star ratings for legends for an invite list. If they go off of just hitting legend in general, there's a lot of people they can invite probably thousands. But if they say, oh, we're only looking for five-star legendary ranked players, their invite list is gonna be much smaller and it makes it much more feasible and fair for them to invite just those players. So my final thoughts, again, these are just my own personal ideas, obviously refined by some of the feedback I got on Twitter. So thank you to those that did engage with me on that thread. Just because the solution I came up with doesn't mean that there's not more issues with it. So you're welcome to provide feedback on this in the comments down below. I don't have any personal connections to Niantic. So these are just my own thoughts. So take it with a grain of salt. Like I mentioned before, this will take extra time and resources out of Niantic staff to implement. So even though I'm putting a video out there, please don't pester Niantic staff with this particularly. If they see it, great. I'd be happy if they try to implement something like this. I don't even need credit for it. They have a lot of other things on their plate. And the matchmaking system they created is working the way that they created it to. It's not a system that is broken. It's just that there are some unintended consequences if people try to tank and then gain ELO and reap some rewards from Go Battle Night. But even stuff like Q times for players at the very top are inconveniences to a very small percentage of the player base. The vast majority of players are not impacted by Q times, which is why I don't think this is necessarily a pressing concern for them to address right at the moment. And the last thing I wanna say is, look, I know that this is a debate that a lot of people are engaging in and some areas is getting a little bit more heated than I think a lot of people would like to see. Just remember to be kind to one another. I think constructive conversations and debate is healthy for any community. Just please bear in mind that there are people on the other side of these social media accounts. And even if we disagree with each other on topics, we should still treat each other with respect. Because to me, Pokemon Go is about the community we have and not necessarily just about queue times and tanking and some GBL rewards. So those are my thoughts on the issue and I'll see y'all next time.